Over the last 100 years, two viruses a year spill over from animals to humans. Locations near the edges of tropical forests where more than 25% of the original forest has been lost tend to be hotbeds for animal to human virus transmissions. Wildlife markets and the legal and illegal trade of wildlife for pets, meat, or medicine increase transmission. A study published in Science found that the cost of preventing future zoonotic outbreaks like COVID-19 by preventing deforestation and regulating the wildlife trade are as little as $22 billion a year, 2% of the economic costs of responding to the COVID-19 pandemic, which some economists predict could reach $10 to $20 trillion. Research shows that land use change, such as development or agricultural expansion, is the single largest driver of emerging diseases. As humans encroach deeper into the undisturbed forest, they are also exposing themselves to animals and the diseases they carry, a process known as virus spillover. Whether it is someone hunting for bushmeat or shopping at a wild animal and fish market, virus spillover can happen any place where there is wildlife, especially in the tropics. The risk becomes even higher when countries cut down forests to make room for roads, agriculture, or infrastructure because they are also creating new edges of the forest, which can increase exposure to animals with diseases that can infect humans. Reports show that deforestation climbed by 3% in 2019, with the planet losing a soccer field-sized chunk of tropical forest every six seconds. But not all hope is lost, if countries invest in strategies to dramatically decrease deforestation. Just 10% of tropical forests hold more than half of the global risk for zoonotic disease emergence, or spillover, from animals to humans. An upfront investment in reducing tropical deforestation now could save us billions of dollars and millions of lives down the line by preventing the next pandemic. The strategies to reduce deforestation will vary by country based on political, economic, and environmental factors. Decreasing deforestation does not have to come at the cost of economic growth. In fact, implementing sustainable strategies, such as getting rid of agricultural subsidies that support the widespread clearing of land, could actually save countries money. Markets that sell wild animals are described by many scientists as hotbeds of disease and have likely been the origin of several zoonotic illnesses, including COVID-19 and the 2003 SARS outbreak. But these markets are just the tip of a multi-billion dollar iceberg, the global wildlife trade. Driven by demand for wild animal delicacies or the exotic pet industry, the global wildlife trade generates 23 billion US dollars every year. But these indulgences come at a cost to public health. The wild animal trade puts species in contact with other species and other diseases that they likely would have never encountered naturally in the wild. As soon as these animals are traded internationally, the risk of a small zoonotic disease outbreak turning into a full-blown pandemic suddenly increases exponentially. According to the new study, the first step for preventing this is banning the national and international trade of species that have a high risk of spreading diseases, such as bats and pangolins. The second step? Making sure those policies stick. In light of the public health crisis, China announced in March 2020 a ban on wildlife trade and consumption for food, which could decrease demand for wild animal parts worldwide. But enforcement is just as crucial as the ban itself. The farming industry in Southeast Asia is often used as a cover to funnel animals from the illegal wildlife trade into the global market unnoticed. We need to fund organizations that know how to track and enforce wildlife trade bans so that they can have a long-term impact on disease prevention. At a global level, the Convention on International National Trade in Endangered Species of Fauna and Flora, or CITES, is responsible for monitoring the wildlife trade, but it has a net global budget of a mere $6 million. To effectively tackle the illegal wildlife trade, however, this organization's budget must increase by at least 250 million US dollars per year, the report states. Monitoring and regulating this trade will not only ensure stronger protection for the many species threatened by the trade, it will also create a widely accessible library of genetic samples that can be used to identify novel pathogens when they emerge, say the authors. It will also generate a genetic library of viruses with two key roles, more speedily identifying the source and location of future emerging pathogens, and developing the tests needed to monitor future outbreaks. Ultimately, this library will contain the information needed to speed the development of future vaccines. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you'll be notified next time we post a video. You can also give this video a like, share it with your friends, and if you have the means and want to support the channel, you can do it on Patreon at patreon.com slash notcomplicated.